Before we start on our part, I just wanted to show you a quick sub-assembly of how this part fits into the rest of the monitor stand. So here you can see the part that attaches to the monitor, and then there's, there's a piece that it snaps into here, and then a little swivel, and then our bracket. And inside our bracket is a little plastic piece and a screw that lets you tighten it down onto the slide that this mounts onto. Let's start an animation of how this all comes apart so you can kind of see how it fits. So there's the bracket that we're going to work on. I feel like it's a good idea to have a good understanding of how your part's going to be used and what the design intent of your part will be so you can design it accordingly and think about how things might change, what are the important parts, is it strength, is it the amount of cutouts or pockets that you're going to have to add in the machining process. What is it that it's going to be important so I can design according to those important things. So now that we've talked about creating the first profile and deciding what plane to put it on and how our parts going to be used, we're ready to really start creating our first sketch. Just keep in mind that every part that you create, you're going to want to think about what your design intent is, choose that profile wisely, and pick the right orientation for the best views in your drawing. So let's jump into creating our first sketch. So before I do that, let's just show the origin real quick so you can kind of see those planes. The, the planes are listed here, so you can see the X, Y, X, Z, and Y, Z that I listed in the first slide. You also have the view cube that tells you what view, so the right view is going to look straight at the right or the YZ plane here. Okay, And then the home takes us to the isometric view. So we're going to start our sketch. I'm just going to pick create sketch. You can usually just go right to the command that you want to start with, but there are several different ways that we can create this and I kind of want to go over a few of them. So to start with I'd probably say one of the my least favorite approaches would be to draw a rectangle. I do want to keep symmetry, so I, I like to keep the origin right in the middle here. But if I drew these, and then maybe I'll use some keyboard shortcuts here. Let's use C for circle. Draw some geometry like this. Maybe I'll add a midpoint relation to keep this right in the center like I mentioned. Then I can use the trim command and Fusion 360 added an S key that pops up a shortcut toolbar that you can customize however you like. So I can say I want to add, I want to either use the trim or add it. So I can type trim in this little search bar here. It finds the trim and I can click it here to use it or if I click this little button then it will add it to the toolbar as well. So I can just click on trim now and get rid of any geometry that I want to. You don't have to do that, but as you can see from closed profiles, if I undo this a little bit, each of these closed profiles becomes a, a different region that you can extrude if you want. You can see right there is highlighting one of those. So if I was going to create this in 3D, I'd have to pick every single one of these. So using the S key and clicking that trim and getting rid of that geometry would be helpful. Now maybe I'll draw another circle here and use the S and trim again. So that creates the basic shape. If I delete that, let me show you another approach just using the line command. I'm just going to use the keyboard shortcut L for line and you'll also notice that I use escape to get out of commands a lot. So if you ever notice a command look like it just went away and I didn't click anything, it's likely that I just hit escape. So with the line command, maybe I'll just draw half of it. So maybe I'll start with a line horizontal here and make that a construction line. A construction line basically means it's ignored when you use it for any kind of command, push-pull, or extrude, or cut, or anything like that. But I can also use it for a mirror command. So I can hit L to start the line command, and just start it somewhere on my construction line here. And then when I'm done here, if I click and drag away from this point, so I click and hold down the mouse and drag away, 
it automatically switches to an arc so I don't have to draw a line then switch to arc then go back to line again and I can really quickly create that geometry and then just go to the mirror command right here from the sketch tools and that pulled it off my screen so let me just pull it into view and so we have the objects to mirror and if you if you select in Fusion 360 by with a window I can window select from left to right and that means it has to be inside the window to be selected so it only pick the top line and, and arc here if I select from right to left then it's a crossing window and it'll pick whatever is inside the window or touching it so you can see that bottom line is not in the window but it touched it so it was able to highlight all of those just with a right to left selection then we'll go to select for the mirror line and pick this one and hit OK. And that's a great way to create our geometry as well. Let's go ahead and delete this with the window select. Again, right to left selects it all and then I'll hit delete on the delete key to remove it. 